Hi, this video is about the epic flute warm up, which you can find in the Aspiring Flutists Practice Companion. I'll put a link below if you would like to order the book from Carolyn Nussbaum Music Company. And without further ado, I'm going to dive right in, no vibrato, and definitely with my metronome on. I already had a little squeak and does that bother me at all? Not one little bit. I just started warming up. I am going to give myself a second chance though. before I go on. There is another video where I describe right hand positions, specifically the pinky, and that helps a lot with the pinky challenge that I just played starting in measure 16. I'll put a link below to that video. Also, as I go lower and lower in these chromatic passages, I'm doing my best to have some gentle momentum that helps me transfer the clear sound from the easier notes down to the notes that are not so easy because I want a clear, consistent volume and color. Some days if I'm just not feeling it, I flutter or sing the entire opening just to give myself a chance to wake up as I start this warm up. It is important to feel good about your low register before you go on. Uh, for now, here I am at measure 16 and I'm transferring the sound of the low as I go higher. So I'm sort of pretending like everything is still a low note. carefully for pitch, doing the best that I can to match the intonation of the C's across the different fingerings and the fluttering or singing if you'd like. Here I am going higher and higher, listening for pitch, keeping up with that gentle momentum, releasing any tension that I find. shot the harmonic. So I'm going to try again for measure 26 and maybe just take a moment first to let go of any neck tension that's been accumulating for me. I'm a little nervous playing the warm-up for the video. Normally I'm playing it from memory, walking around the room, and it feels different. So it's good practice. <clears throat> Here I am at measure 26, hopefully a little looser, a little easier, and I'm looking for that fourth G to come out right in the sweet spot.
So going on to the harmonics, I like to just look at the bottom pitches to guide my fingerings, but I know that I'm gonna be playing them two octaves higher. Also, a little behind the scenes tweak that you can make, um, or a little inside info, uh, in measure 39, I accidentally put the grace notes there when I meant to put them in 42, so that's where I'll play them. That's my weird thing that I'm always monitoring and releasing and letting go. What's your weird thing? Do you have a little bit of body tension that accumulates as you warm up or as you're practicing technical challenges or pieces? Whatever that thing is, don't feel bad about it. Just stay aware and always be looking for ways to release it, let it go, feel better about it, increase your body awareness. So here I am at 45. And I didn't quite get the right pitch, so I'm gonna check the real fingering to remind my ears what pitch I'm going for. Now I arrive at measure 47. This is actually my favorite part of the entire epic warm-up. It's based on the magic carpet exercise in Helen Blackburn's Super Duper Zen Yoga Warm-Up Packet. I love the magic carpet. And the key here is to listen low. Harmonics have a high part of the sound, kind of sounds like the flute, the silvery sort of soprano sound. And then it also, every time you play a harmonic, there's also um, what I call the guy voice, kind of this uh, underneath the sound. It's a lower part of the sound, lower harmonics. Um, I'm always listening for the lower sound, even though it's not as easy, because that is the way that I gain depth in my sound, which is something I'm always searching for. So listen low and let the harmonics in 47 and 48 teach you what to do with your air and your lips as you go to the real fingerings in 49. By the way, fingerings have changed here. feels good to get up in the high register and start hearing that depth that I'm craving. So this is time for a small stretch break. Here's a super easy one that you can do. Just touch the top of your head. You can leave your flute in your hands and notice how high your ribs are. And when your arms come down, let your ribs stay nice and high as we go on to breath kicks, which means no tonguing. Use your core tummy muscles in whatever way it makes sense to you. These can be a little messy, that's okay. But listen for the sweet spot in the center of the little bit of rough sound that comes with breath kicks. support the notes when I went back to regular playing. Okay, exaggerated vibrato pulses. I'm gonna put a link below to John Wyan's vibrato page because that is an amazing resource for acclimating your ears to what slow vibrato pulses sound like. I won't go on about it, um, but I do love it and I hope you'll go there and explore.
dry throat. So I'm gonna take a drink of water. And I actually really love the high register quintuplets that are coming up. So I wanna be better prepared for them and have some momentum going into them. So I'm gonna start at 74 again. to those. I'm striving for easy peasy neck, good alignment, really flexible engagement of core muscles, and I like to try to hear that sound that you would hear if you were in a big concert hall, no matter where you are, even if you're in a small carpeted practice room. All right, on to the octave slurs with just some easy switched locations, and now I'm on to the octave slurs. I'll share with you here one of my favorite breathing exercises. It's two, four, seven. In through the nose for two, hold for four, slow out for seven. That's an awesome breathing exercise to do for performance anxiety. I probably do that 50 times the day of a performance. It's also just good for getting your head back in the game, increasing clarity, and relaxing yourself. So back to work with some double tonguing fun. If you're not quite ready for this tempo, then just leave your metronome on 60 like it has been for the rest of the warm up, but have the click represent the eighth note so that you can go half tempo. That would sound like this. hang out at half tempo whenever you get to double tonguing fun until you've built up your confidence and familiarity and then you can strive for staying at 60 representing the quarter note excuse me the quarter note equaling 60 beats per minute all right so here's double tonguing fun at tempo Oh, there's this one little thing that I do. It's just for myself to relax my throat, relax my neck, keep me kind of loose. Whenever I get to the measures with the little transitions, like measure 107, I just flutter the first eighth note. So if you're wondering what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing.
just add your own little touches to make it more fun for you. Like I mentioned in the beginning, no judginess for imperfections because you're gonna do this epic warm up every day anyway, so you're gonna get better and better and better. And even for me, uh, I think I need to do the epic warm up in front of people more because I do notice that doing it for the video for you guys, I've accumulated some tension that I'm not normally used to. So that's a new goal I've set for myself is be able to play beautifully, walking around the room with my eyes closed, but also if I need to just stand in place for whatever reason, be just as relaxed. So I'm excited about that new goal. All right, so embouchure flexibility and tapers to finish off the warm up, and you'll notice the ritardando at the end where I just ignore the metronome a little bit, or a lot. Oh, and you know, there, there have been tips all along the side. I'm not reading all of those to you, but I do wanna just encourage you to have at least a gentle forward momentum kind of sway to encourage your lips to follow a smooth path of motion for the harmonics. Congratulations on completing the epic warm up today. Is that when you do the entire thing beautifully, perfectly imperfect, or perfectly imperfectly? That's hard to. I really wish I hadn't started that sentence, and I don't want to redo this video, so you're just going to have to deal with my lack of verbal control there. Anyway, perfectly imperfect, or however you want to say it, um, when you do this complete epic warm up. You should feel very proud of yourself and excited that you've learned new things about flute playing and about yourself and feel ready to take on whatever challenges come next. I hope you enjoy the free download and I also hope you'll consider ordering the entire book, The Aspiring Flutist Practice Companion. There are seven chapters on how to practice. There is a chapter with 100 practice games and this epic warm up is only one of 14 pretty extensive exercises that cover a huge range of flute skills, including a couple more warm-ups and some very challenging exercises like crazy cool chromatics, um, major minor magic, joyful jiggles and jumps, all kinds of alliterative exercises. So have a great practice session and feel free to email me at info at practicejunkie.com with any questions, questions that you might have about the warm-up. And I obviously didn't practice how to end this video, so bye.